A big problem faces all traders is how much money they put in their account to trade that strategy. It's a huge mistake to start with the minimum amount of capital to trade because even the most robust strategy or a portfolio of strategies will fail if it was undercapitalized. The question is how much money do you need to trade a single strategy or a portfolio of strategies? In this video, I will answer this question statistically with exact workflow. It is not magic. In fact, it's based on statistics and probabilities. The method we will use is called Monte Carlo simulation. Now, this is not the general Monte Carlo simulation that is used in many other fields like biotech or the army or rocket science. We need a special kind of simulation. Actually, it's a simple kind of simulation to find out the capital requirement for any trading strategy or a portfolio of strategy. I will show you how to do that using three methodologies. We will use ChatGPT and an Excel sheet and a dedicated software package. First of all, let's define the problem. So here is a 25 trades from a real strategy. And if I plot these trades, the curve looks as follows. So these are the trades. This is the equity. So we're just adding every trade one after the other in sequence and we get this equity curve. And if you backtest the strategy, you get this equity curve and you think, okay, I'm going to deposit money, start trading this equity curve and I will end up winning. And this is the total of all these trades. And this is the average. Now, if I reshuffle those trades, so I'm just going to sort this. And you see it's the exact total and the exact average, but now our curve is different just because we reshuffled the sequence of the trades. So now suddenly I start here, go below zero to a negative 1300 and then go above. I can reshuffle again and I get a different curve. And every time I reshuffle, it's a totally different curve because that sequence changes, but we still keep the same total and the same average. Now, why this is important? Because the future of this strategy, it's not exactly the same as the backtest historical data. So even though we might be close in terms of average trade, number of trades, the standard deviation, but the sequence of trades, we are totally oblivious. We don't know anything about that. We hope that it will resemble something like the back test, but in fact, we cannot know. And if we randomize this test 1000, 2000, 10,000 times, we will get many equity curves. And those equity curves, it's called a Monte Carlo simulation. Basically, we reshuffling our data many, many, many times. And if you want to get fancy, you can add noise to that data, but let's stick with the basic one which is just reshuffling our exact data that we provide the software with. And we draw all the curves out of that data. Once we have all the curves plotted, we can see how many curves went below zero and how many curves stayed above zero. And from that, we will have a probability of the amount of capital required. So first of all, to trade any financial instrument, you need capital to start with. You cannot start from zero. You have to start from a certain number. That certain number is called the margin requirement. So for futures, this is the long overnight margin. That means if you are holding a position overnight, this is the amount of money you need for a single contract. Now my strategy, the one I just showed you is the E-mini S&P 500 futures. So as you can see, currently the required margin is $16,060 per a single contract. So if we want to trade any strategy on the S&P 500 index using the E-mini futures, we need $16,060 per a single contract to take a trade. If we have less than that amount, we cannot take a trade. So even if we have just a little bit less, so let's say we have $16,000 in our account, we cannot take a signal on the next trade because we don't have enough margin to cover that trade. That line in the sand, that value is called risk of ruin. So risk of ruin when it comes to trading, 
is the level where you cannot trade anymore. It's not zero dollars in your account. It's the level where you cannot trade. So this will be different for every symbol. And that's why it will be, of course, different for every strategy you have. Not only because the sequence changes, it's because which instrument you are trading. So in our case, if we want to test how much capital we need to trade a strategy on the S&P 500 index using E-mini futures, we need at least to stay above $16,060. So when we plot those thousands of curves using Monte Carlo test, all the curves should be above $16,060 to be able to stay trading in the future. So I will start the first simulation with ChatGPT. Now ChatGPT uses Python to do its uh, code. And basically I have a prompt that tells it to do the Monte Carlo testing and what do we need to do? The problem with ChatGPT, it is not consistent all the time. Now, this is the problem has been there since day one. It's not getting better in my testing, but let's say it cost you zero money and it's going to give you some data back. So if you load the trade just like this, you see these are all the trades loaded here. I will put this prompt in my community. You can get it for free. So the result of this prompt is this. It will ask you to use these defaults or change it. So in this case, uh, the starting capital is $35,000, margin requirements 15, number of simulation is 5,000. I said use the defaults and it comes out with these numbers. Also, this is the curves. The next solution is a Monte Carlo simulation that I found on GitHub. The link for this Excel will be in the description below. Basically, again, you give it all the trades. So these are the trades of the strategy. And then you give it the starting capital, the margin requirements, and how many trades per year. And then the contract size, we, in this case, we're using one. And the number of simulations. And then you run it, and it gives you these numbers. Now, these numbers you see are totally different than what ChatGPT gave us because each one is presenting the data in a different way. So let me explain. This one says, if you start with $17,500, there is a 25% chance that your strategy will go below this value and stop trading. That means this is a strategy. This is a robust strategy, okay? These are the result of the backtest of this robust strategy. But if I start with 17,500 with the current margin requirements, then I will have 25% chance that my strategy will go below 16,000 and therefore I will not be able to trade. And that's what I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Even though my strategy is robust, is profitable, I want to trade it. I start with 17,500. The margin requirement is 16,000. I have 25% chance that I will lose to the point of my capital will be under 16,000 and therefore I will not be able to trade the next signal. So you see how important is knowing how much capital you need for every strategy or every portfolio you trade. Now here we have other starting equity. So if we start with 21,875, we have 8% chance that our strategy will stop trading because it doesn't have enough capital at 26 we are two percent at 30,000 we have zero chance that our strategy will be under sixteen thousand dollars and of course more capital will yield to the same thing remember this simulation started with thirty five thousand dollars and so with thirty five thousand dollars at ninety eight percent confidence level i have one hundred percent probability that I will be profitable. Coming back here, you see here, this is 35,000. I have, again, 0% risk of ruin, meaning it's 100% probability that I will be profitable. Now, why did I do this differently? Because every software will present this data differently. And you need to understand how this is working. Again, here I present the maximum drawdown in a different way. So probability that the maximum drawdown is less than $25,000 is almost 100%. So if I start this strategy with $35,000 and I do 5,000 simulation, 
I have 100, almost 100% chance that my drawdown will be below $25,000. Each software represents the data differently, but they're all trying to tell you the same thing. So this is Quant Analyzer by Strategy Quant X. Now there is a free version and a paid version. So the advantage here is you can load the strategy, not the results, from Strategy Quant X. So you see here, this is my strategy loaded and not the trade results. Now you can still load the trade results. You can just load the report, which is again, just the trade data. And here is the Monte Carlo analysis. So these are the confidence level, just like I showed you in ChatGPT. And these are all the curves. So in this case, I'm doing 5,000 curves using the exact method, meaning I'm using all the data. So all the data, that means I will always end up at the same value because I'm using all the trades. So it doesn't matter how much I shuffle them, they will always end up at the same point. Now, using my risk of ruin analysis, let's see. Now this is like the Excel sheet, so it takes a different value of capitalization. But there is a difference here. Here, it doesn't take into account the margin requirement. So for example, let's look at this one. At $15,000, it says our risk of ruin is almost 0 0.02. But because this is not taking the margin requirements into the equation, you need to add the margin requirement to this value. So in our case for this strategy, it's trading the S&P E-mini futures and the capital requirements 16,000. So that means we need to add 16,000 to this value. So that puts us at $31,000. At $31,000, we are very close to zero risk of ruin. That means almost 100% of the 5,000 curves are above $16,000, which is very close to the Excel sheet, very close to ChatGPT. Finally, I will show you this is a paid software. And here we can uh, dig down, and I think this will cement the idea of how to find the capitalization. This is again the same strategy that is loaded. So if I pull the uh, trades, these are the, it's so on the S&P, these are the trades. So this is our strategy. We can see we are making $117,000 using single contract, all these figures. Now this is the sequence back tested. Let me now shuffle these trades. So I'm gonna use a shortcut to shuffle and let's focus here on the net profit. So every time I shuffle, you see the curve changes, but of course our net profit doesn't change. But what changes is, look at this, the equity high and equity low. Every time I shuffle, it's different. Maximum consecutive wins. Every time I shuffle is different. Maximum drawdown, return to drawdown ratio. All these keeps changing because every time I shuffle, they have a different sequence but it will never affect the average trade or the net profit at the end. And this is what the simulation is doing. It's shuffling these uh, thousand, 5,000 times, and that's what we get. To cement the idea of the starting capital, this is using zero capitalization. You see here, I'm starting with 17,500, but the amount of re margin requirement is zero. So if I put 16,000 now, 1660, that's the margin requirement. And now let's shuffle. So I'm gonna shuffle until we find a strategy that will not, this one. You see this one, this strategy, trade once and fail. And why? So if we look at the trades, we see we started our strategy with 17,500. First trade lost $1,500. So immediately we fell below 16,060. So that's why we cannot take the next trade. And if I do again, let's look at this one. This one failed almost after nine trades. Again, we start with 17,500. Our equity curve goes up all the way to 20, dips down. And then at, after one trade where we lose almost $7,000, we are back at 10. And now we cannot trade anymore. Now I can use, let's say, the Monte Carlo simulation. And let's look at this. So this is 5,000 simulations. And again, you see these curves. So at 5,000 simulations, starting with 17,500, we have 30% chance of losing. This is end up losing. 
Now let me match it with the other ways that we did it. So let's put 35,000. And now we can see we, we have 19.9% of being profitable. So just like the other, so it's almost 100% that we are sure we are profitable. So for this strategy, my margin requirement is $16,000. I can deposit $20,000 and start trading. But my simulation tell me that I need $35,000 to make sure that this strategy will keep trading in the future. But in reality, that's a probability curve. Like as we saw, 17,500 cover 70% of the curves. So I can start with 17,500 and I know I have 70% probability that I don't need more money. But if I do, I know exactly how much I'm going to need. This workflow is exactly the same for any strategy, any market and any portfolio of strategies. So once you have a robust strategy, a robust portfolio of strategies, it's extremely important to be well capitalized to trade your portfolio. So when you suffer that inevitable drawdown in the future, you will have enough capital to cover the margin requirement for your next signal. If you like this video, then you will love the next one.